Well, I have some big news to share. I will no longer be using pivot tables. Yep, you heard that correctly, no more pivot tables. Now that Excel has released the pivot by function, there is no longer a need to use pivot tables to summarize data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pivot your data in seconds using this new function. Let's get started. The new pivot by function takes the components of a pivot table and puts them into function form so that we can quickly pivot data using a formula. Just like a pivot table, it supports pivoting data by row and column fields and has many different aggregation functions built in to summarize the data. Pivot by has four required arguments and multiple optional arguments that allow you to modify your table by sorting, filtering, adding subtotals, and much more. Let's look at an example. Here we have sales data and want to summarize it by region by year. First, enter the pivot by function and then select the column containing the row values as the row fields argument. For this example, I want the regions listed down the rows of the table and the years across the columns, so I'm going to select the region column as the argument. Next, we need to select the column containing the values we want to appear as the columns as the call fields argument. So I'm going to select the year column. Next up, we have the values argument. The values argument is going to be the values you want to summarize in the table. We want to summarize sales by region by year, so I'm going to select the sales column as the value argument. Finally, we need to enter the function argument, which is how we want to aggregate the values. As you can see here, there are a lot of calculation options to choose from, but I'm going to enter some because we want to sum up region sales by year. Now that we've entered all four mandatory arguments, we can enter the function to create our formula built pivot table. Next, we want to analyze the data on a more granular level and break down the regional sales by representative. We can easily do this by selecting both the representative and the region columns as the row fields argument. Now our rows are summarized by region for each representative. Let's look at how we can modify our table using the optional arguments. The field headers argument informs the pivot by function of whether the data you entered has headers and if you want to display or hide them. As you can see here, our table didn't automatically pull in the data headers we selected. So if we wanted to add the headers, we would need to set the field headers argument equal to three. I don't really like the way this looks, so I'm going to update the field headers argument to one to indicate that our data has headers, but not to show them. Next, the row total depth and row sort order arguments edit the rows of our table, and the call total depth and call sort order arguments modify the columns. For example, let's say we wanted to remove the grand totals in the last row and column of our table. To do this, we can use the row total depth and the call total depth arguments. These two optional arguments determine whether to include grand totals, grand totals and subtotals, or no totals. Because we want to remove the grand totals altogether, I'm going to set both total depth arguments equal to zero and then enter the function to remove all totals. Now let's say we changed our mind and want to add the grand totals back, but this time take things a step further by adding subtotals to the rows to summarize each representative sales. To add grand totals and subtotals to the rows, we need to update the row total depth argument to two and then update the call total depth argument to one to return grand totals only. Now the grand totals are back and we have subtotals for each representative sales by year. Next, let's look at how to sort our table using the row sort order and call sort order arguments. These arguments sort the rows and columns by entering a positive or negative index value. So for example, if we wanted to sort the representatives in descending order, we would input a negative one as the row sort order argument to tell the pivot by function to sort the rows in the first column by descending order. The negative sign indicates to sort the data in descending order, so if we wanted to sort the representatives alphabetically, we would update the argument to a positive one to sort ascending. If we wanted to sort by region, we would enter a two or a negative two. And lastly, if we wanted to sort each representative's total sales from highest to lowest, we would enter a negative three to sort our values in descending order. Lastly, we can use the filter array argument to filter our data table. For example, if we wanted to filter our data by the West region, we would select the region column and then set it equal to West to return all rows where the region equals West. 
Because we are only filtering by one value, it doesn't make sense to keep the subtotals in our table, so I'm going to remove them by updating the row sort order to one. Now we have the Western region sales by representative sorted in descending order. All right, now that we've mastered the pivot by function, let's go over some advantages of using this function instead of pivot tables. One of the biggest advantages of using the pivot by function is that the function is dynamic, so if any of our data changes, it will automatically update in our table. For example, a huge West region sale in June was just processed for Regan Bosch, and as you can see, she automatically jumped to the top of our table. Another advantage is that the pivot by function still works if your data contains blank rows. For example, when we imported this data into our worksheet, a bunch of rows missing data were also imported. If we were using a pivot table to summarize this, we would have to go through and clean up all the blanks before we could create a pivot table. But as you can see here, the pivot by function automatically sets all blank cells equal to zero when summarizing the data. Once summarized, we can clean up our table by adding another filter to remove the row containing zeros by multiplying the first filter criteria by a second criteria where the ID column does not equal zero. Finally, unlike pivot tables, we can use the pivot by function to summarize text values. For example, here we have 2020 sales data and want to list which representatives had sales in each region. So I'm going to enter the pivot by function, select the region column as the row fields argument, the year column as the call fields argument, and the representative column as the values argument. Now here's the trick. For the function argument, we need to select a function that works with text values. So I'm going to choose a rated text to list each representative separated by a comma. Lastly, I'm going to set both total depth arguments equal to zero because we don't need grand totals when summarizing text values. Now just enter the function to list the representatives that had sales in each region. To wrap up, we learned how to create an entire pivot table in seconds using the new pivot by function. Are you excited about this function or do you prefer a classic pivot table? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more.